Hey everybody, welcome to Watchmen with Jay, Jack, and Matt. My name is Jay. I'm Matt. And I'm the brick joke wasn't funny. And welcome to the show. Jack, I don't think it was intended to be funny, but... Uh, when, when someone says it's a joke, that's, it should be funny. That's the, that's the joke of kind of the comedian, if you read the comic or watched the movie. Which you did. Okay. It's kind of like a joke that's ironic or, or not. It's kind of sad than rather. Yeah, I get it, but I don't really have anything else from the show to say. Are you kidding me? There are really great quotes from this this episode. What? You're you're not going to cuss again? Not going to swear? Um, <laughs> but I I agree with Matt's sentiment here in drop, dropping the f bomb that we had to just edit out. But uh, yeah, there's so many. I figured with, with the uh, swinging uh, blue uh, member joke that was in there. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of good stuff uh, in this episode. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what your deal is on this one, Jack. Are you are you cranky tonight? No, I'm not cranky. I'm not, I'm not effing cranky like someone is. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not cranky. I just think that so there was you're, some you're, really cranky. You're, you're, you're coming across as cranky. Uh, okay. Well, well. Ep- <laughs> episode uh, three. Um, I I this episode uh, and again she was killed by space junk. Um, was uh, so freaking good. Um, uh, if I wish I could use some expletives because I I kind of left this episode uh, just really pumped. I mean I've been enjoying it as it is, and and they've been introducing you know these new characters, uh, especially with Sister Knight, uh, Angela Abar, and what's going on in Tulsa, um, and it's a really compelling story. Plus a little little tastes and hints of uh, Ozzy Mandius, <laughs> but uh, with the kind of introduction here. Of uh, is it Julie Blake, right? Lori Blake. Lori Blake. Sorry, Lori Blake. Lori Blake uh, the Silk Spectre, um, or formerly Silk Spectre Two. Um, man, what a freaking good episode! Yeah, I, I felt like this one was really firing on all cylinders. And for those that might have felt like the the second episode dragged, or maybe they didn't get as hooked in on the first two episodes, I felt like it. You know, we have all the moving parts, and they're they're coming together in in a lot of fun ways. So, um, I've I've enjoyed this this show so far. But but yes, this one, uh, I think it was the first one where I was like, this was excellent. So, um, and and I think that you know Lori's character, seeing her and how she's been affected post Watchmen mm-hmm. is was just so good. Yeah. Um. I I, I mean. In, she's in a little the, uptight. She what? She's a little uptight. <laughs> you would be too if you found out that your mom was raped by the comedian. I guess that's true. And, but yet she takes on the last name of the comedian, which uh, in the in the comic, I, I don't believe that she took on the last name of Blake. That was just the revelation that she came to. Um, so we're kind of seeing how she's dealing with this heritage that's you know you know i mean she's had 30 some years to process the fact that she is part comedian and uh as you know jack pointed out like she she has a dark sense of humor yep and and that's where uh just her character where it's at now uh, basically, the the vigil, vigilante killer <laughs> pretty much was shooting the guy, and and how much you know with with the adoption of the last name, but also just the kind of cynicism that the comedian uh, kind of brought to the original Watchmen comic. Um, she's bringing here uh, and uh, is really the only one of the original kind of Watchmen, seemingly the original Watchmen characters. Uh, that's still uh, at play or in play um, since, you know, Dr. Manhattan's on Mars. Uh, Ozymandias is wherever the hell he is. Um, you, think he's, and, you think he's trying to escape? Yes, clearly. Um, okay. Whatever imprisonment he has. Um, and we can dig into that more as we get into this episode. Um, and then uh, it also, I guess it was kind of heavily hinted that Night Owl is in prison or something. Uh, for something he did, and that's what Senator Keene's going to possibly get him out or pardon him for uh, whenever he becomes, or if he becomes president. So, um, yeah, just a really, like, I was perfectly fine if the original Watchmen storyline was just kind of just out, just kind of there on the periphery, not really a major influence to the story. 
Um, I was perfectly fine with that because I think the story is really compelling uh, without that. But adding this to it, I think, just takes it to a whole nother level that I think, um, you know, much like Walkabout Episode 4 of Lost was that kind of turning point where, yes, it was a good show, but like that point I was like, yes, <laughs> um, this this episode was, was that for me. And I, I don't know if it maybe felt the same for you, Matt. It seems like possibly it was similar in vain. No, I, I think the call out to walk about is great because that, I think that's on on par if we're if we're comparing you know if we're making the lost comparison here because it, it, it not only did it I felt expand a character it brought in a new character but expanded this this universe that's been created so so far we've just been in Tulsa and now we start to understand and we're able to put together some of these other pieces that have been laid out and and explain exactly what the the dopa uh thing is which is 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 funny i mean at every moment we get with with lori blake in this this episode she she is there poking holes and making fun of things <laughs> the things that are there and and you got i don't know you got to love the 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 moxie that that her character has um the dopa was mentioned the defensive police act we get a little bit behind why Green is making such a uh, a scene on the political uh, arena, and and how he actually fits into to you know why Tulsa is is unique because um, you know their police had this event that occurred, and then they they developed this this uh, you know uh, what is it identity secrecy you know and and using masks to fight masks as, basically as, like. Vigilantes, but legal vigilantes. Um, right. Where it's interesting to see that as we pulled back outside of Tulsa, uh, the uh, the other type of vigilante is still around, even though uh, if Lori Blake has her way, uh, you know, she'll eventually lock them all up. But um, it's or it's, just shoot them in cold blood. <laughs> right. Uh, and that to me is where it's it, that right off the bat we're seeing. You know, originally she took on her mother's. Uh, kind of moniker of Silk Spectre, but now it seems very clearly she seems to be, you know, in the camp of, you know, the comedian too, uh, in a lot of ways, which I find fascinating just because the comedian's such a, you know, complex, or maybe not complex, but a not somebody generally root for type of character, um, a very flawed character. Um, but it's interesting to see her adopt that cynicism after 30 years, after 30 years of the events of of Watchmen and the giant squid being dropped uh, on New York City, killing 3 million people. Um, But either way, excited to talk about this uh, episode with you gentlemen. Uh, We also have some listener feedback to get into. But before we get into any of that, I want to thank the people that make this show possible, our patrons, over at patreon.com slash Jack. All of the podcasts on the Jay and Jack Network are listener supported, and this one is no different. If you enjoy this show and all of the other ones, consider contributing whether one dollar or more a month uh, to help make these shows possible. That's patreon. dot com slash Jay and Jack, or go to jayandjack. dot com and click on the Become a Patron link today. All right, gentlemen. Uh, so yeah, um, we are following deep into the tracks here uh where the first two episodes were really focusing on angela's character and this one is through the perspective of um lori blake um but yeah so lori blake i think we've already talked about a few things here um but what other things do you want to dig in with uh this character um she's still obviously in love with dr manhattan in a way or connected to him and still connected to night owl because she has uh i guess his pet owl (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> name who did 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 night owl have a, a pet owl i'm trying to remember if he did or not um i don't know i mean i i remember uh you know he had the i thought it was the ship that was named archimedes but i don't remember yeah. him having a pet owl yeah, I don't think he um, did, but, oh. well and and if we're wrong on that uh feel free <laughs> I'm sure to people write will. in and, <laughs> and tell us that we forgot something in issue. Well, I mean, I have uh, I have the collected works here, and I just I'm not seeing an owl. But again, it might just been it might have been there for a brief moment. <laughs> um, to at least take this episode from the top, um, and the moment that that we've we've mentioned there, we see this bank robbery, uh, happening, and uh, I I love that this was a whole setup. 
Um, mm-hmm. And it also kind of references a little bit back to the Minuteman. Uh, the Minutemen uh, had a character yes. called Dollar Bill who was actually kind of a corporate shill, so to speak. Like he worked for the bank and he was kind of just there as kind of like a figurehead almost like, mm-hmm. hey, our banks are protected by this, you know, masked hero. Um, but then um, the the bank robbery is foiled by uh, what we find out to be Mr. Shadow, who is a kind of a batman knockoff i guess right looked like batman to me <laughs> well they even had the reference of the uh um one rich guy off the street or whatever oh yeah, yeah rich keeping rich guys off the street i liked that so um yeah no i i liked this this whole i mean this was a great great way to start off the episode um, did you see that twist coming that it wasn't really a bank robbery Kind of. I knew something else just because, you know, we saw the preview and she right. said, you know, FBI. So, um, yes, but I, it was it was still interesting just because the whole episode is kind of juxtaposed with her in the uh, Dr. Manhattan phone booth, which I found interesting. Uh, and her kind of going through this joke throughout the entire episode. Um, and... Uh, and so, yeah, I just thought it was kind of just a really compelling intro to the character. Uh, but I, it, it didn't have me sold on that immediately. And I'm assuming same for you, Jack. I want that cell service because if you can send a message to to Mars in 40 seconds, I want that. <laughs> it's improved technology. I mean, I'm sure Dr. Manhattan invented it or something. Because that's 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 outstanding. I mean, I, ha- I have drop-offs every now and then. So it would just be nice to be able to have something that quick. <laughs> I just thought well, it was again, amazing. Uh, Doctor Manhattan can connect uh, beyond the realm that normal people can, or even satellites. So maybe that's maybe that's the speed up there. Okay. But now, what, what do you think the purpose of the blue box is? To just make humanity feel good, like it's like a little like security blanket, or is this to also allow Doctor Manhattan to try to keep some of his his humanity? I or think... maybe maybe he, not to forget us, Doctor Manhattan. Don't forget us. Well, I, I think, yeah, it's a bit of all of those things because, you know, he is um, a very powerful god, essentially. Uh, he was the nuclear deterrent for um, <coughs> the United States for a long time into the Vietnam War uh, in this universe. Um, but the the fact that he was becoming so disassociated with humanity was incredibly concerning, I think, for humanity because you don't want uh, this being that could care less whether you were alive or dead um to possibly you know take judgment on on humanity in a negative light but uh i wonder who made that though if it actually dr manhattan wanted to do because i feel like just from his character arc in the watchman comic book series uh that he could care less if those things were made so i wonder if it's a, just a government thing to again make people feel safe even though it's just kind of snake oil i would well, say I mean, that I mean, if it is snake oil, I mean, maybe maybe the messages don't even reach him. I mean, it's all fake. Um, maybe but you're, you're telling me that you can't get a message to Mars in 40 well, seconds. Possibly, Just ruined my night. Possibly, but also uh, it'd be interesting to see because he did hear, you know, uh, Lori in this conversation because um, he, yes, what... he threw that car back. <laughs> well, I mean, if he is Dr. Manhattan and he's he's that super omniscient i mean maybe maybe he just watches lori and he knows what's up with her yeah and you know he could care less about all of the other millions of people that call into the blue box and try to get their souls saved or is it just a is it just a money scam yeah i Uh, I I don't again again, if it's that's where it's kind of like is it snake oil or not maybe Yeah. yeah maybe May, yeah, maybe maybe this is something that uh, we'll still even get an answer for, or, or maybe never. So yeah, I don't know if but, we even need it to be honest. I think it just kind of is there, um, but I, I I wouldn't put personally. I'm I, I, putting a lot of stock into it. I mean, I, I've been amazed at some of the answers that we do get pretty pretty quickly. I mean, at, at some point, I mean, they mentioned her as Agent Bla- Blake, and I was like, wait, is is that the comedians like related to the comedian? And then, then they mentioned Lori and I'm like, Oh, you know, so, and then of course they, F you Lori, <laughs> different Lori, different oh, okay. show. 
Sorry. Uh, I don't know. I just I was I was glad that it wasn't like a, a secret where where it was like oh or we've got to wait this out before. Well, they kind of hit knows. us over the head with it, right? And then uh, much like the brick uh, at the end of the joke. Um, but uh, you know, with the was that Warhol uh, painting that she yes. has in her uh, thing there, which I find interesting. Um, that she would keep that there because she does have this disdain for uh, Adrian uh, Veet and Veit and um, and vigilantes in general. So I do find that fascinating that she has that piece of art up there. Well, it's in- interesting that the the piece of art also showcases the four people that she references in her joke. Yes, I mean there's there's other heroes. I mean it doesn't have the comedian in there. It doesn't have. Um, trying to think of some of the other Rorschach. Uh, Rorschach. It doesn't. Yeah. Um, well, it's, I think it's from it, that second photograph. I think it was. I think those are the ones not there. Rorschach and the comedian. Right. Um. So, you know, it just. Uh, I like. I like the the fact that when we do get to her apartment, though, we do kind of learn more about that and. Um, yeah, we got the owl. I'm trying to think of like what else happens in that scene, but I might be, I might be skipping over something. She fed um, it a, she fed it a mouse. That's true. Yeah. I was, I was at one point I was like, okay, what, are, what is she feeding a mouse to? So, um, I thought it was going to be a snake. Right. Cause snakes are cool. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But, uh, apparently the technology for, for voice activation is there, but but they don't have iPods or i i iPhones, you know. Like there's no Apple Music where she could just say play play Devo. It's it's actually a CD, which I thought was kind of interesting. You know, it's like this old technology mixed with well, she, new she's technology. old school. She is old school, yeah, sure. Um. Anyway, uh, the um the jokes that are kind of happening. Like she, she tells the one joke in the blue booth, um, blue booth. Is that what it's called? The blue, blue. It sounds like a weird thing to say. Blue booth. <laughs> it's like the booths, you know? Exactly. So Probably yeah, you go blue yourself myself. in one of the blue booths. Uh, so, uh, she messes up the bricklayer joke, which is obviously like we find out as a setup at the very end, but she tells this other, other joke though about the three heroes, um, which I thought was great, you know, like just that reveal, like throughout the episode, I Mm -hmm. I liked how they, they kind of spread that out. Yeah, Um, exactly. And they kind of all tied in with, yeah. Cause you know, right after, um, kind of finding out that if she does this for Senator Keene, uh, he'll let out, uh, the owl, which is in reference to a night owl. So that's, you know, when she's talking about it, she talks about, um, uh, that person, and then once it goes to Ozzy Mandius, she's talking about that, and then uh, talking about uh, Doctor Manhattan. Um, so I would assume because those are on the joke, we haven't had a uh, Night Owl yet, uh, but that we will be getting him at some point, right? Or or could he just maybe at the very end is released or something? I don't know how they're going to set up season two, or if there even is going to be a season two. Um, but I'd be curious to see for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm just as curious too about that. Like like how are they getting owl technology too? I mean like Angela's <laughs> goggles, you know, or even the the ship, you know, yeah. like or did they just steal did they just confiscate all that stuff and then just, you know, they're like, "Well, we've got scientists, we can figure this out." Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe he worked with them at some point and then kind of went the other way at some point. Yeah, we reduce your sentence, you know, give us your give us your deets. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Um, the, um, the scene where, where she's, she goes into the, the FBI, um, kind of, what is it, a uh, conference room there, you know, um, and we see, uh, I'm not sure who that agent is talking, um, but, you know, he's kind of flipping through a lot of the different things and kind of basically bringing the, the audience up to speed with things that we already know, uh, making connections with, uh, you know, Custer's last stand and the seventh cavalry and the fact that they're just KKK with different masks. Um, but at, at one point though, we do Agent get to Petey. see an excerpt of Rorschach's journal, mm-hmm. which is the October 13th 
um, excerpt, which is basically the the excerpt that kind of begins the entire Watchmen mm-hmm. storyline. Yeah. So that was kind of an interesting, like that's the one that that it starts with. So and it culminates uh, on November second, right, or second or third, um, with the the giant squid monster. Right. I think it was November second. Yeah, I, I believe you're right. I, uh, I think well, Danny he, made a he thought it was some, his, important, but the FBI guy didn't think, right? But I, I think it is, and that's where I do find it fascinating. Um, yeah, uh, November 2nd. So kind of a short time frame uh, once uh, Rorschach figured everything out. Um, but yes, it they are very much seemingly like, you know, just a different version of the KKK. Um, but the fact that, you know, it's a... Um, whatever Rorschach journal was became the manifesto for these people. Um, and I, I do think there is more there that might uh, come to play as time goes on. Maybe, or it's just going to be a little aside thing. What do you guys think? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean that, uh, that Rorschach journal cover was kind of cool because it had the guns and the eyes, um, or at least that's what I saw. Well, they brought it up for a reason, so... Yeah. I I, I could see them referencing Rorschach's, Rorschach's journal yet again. I mean, it's... it's it, I mean, it's almost kind of like a show Bible at this point. So... Yeah. Or part of its canon. No, no that's not the show's Bible. But, um, anyway, uh, I like that that Lori basically tells tells them, like, that she doesn't want everybody else to go... Like this is like <laughs> she's just taking over the the job here, but she picks Petey as her. <laughs> <laughs> and like, can, Petey, can we just... Petey, was, Petey was great. Yes, Petey. and I love that he brought his own little mask. Yeah, <laughs> that mask when changes Rome, later. It's Tulsa. Yeah, um, not Rome. But, but I, I love how she, yeah. Rome. What's oh yeah? I love how um, he or she basically goes solo. Um, she quickly kind of is one, I guess, doesn't care, but also kind of horrified about how, uh, the Tulsa, uh, police conduct themselves. And I think even just seeing, uh, their warehouse and where they're rounding up the, uh, seventh cavalry, um, she does seem disturbed by it a little bit. Um, but also, uh, just kind of doesn't play, uh, the game and, um, definitely, uh, kind of antagonizes Looking Glass uh, in there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. With each other. His races, his races room. Yes. Racist uh, detector. Detector yes, room. That's right. Yes, yes. Room. And um, one of the one of my favorite lines that she says when she's picking her teeth, she says, um, "You know, wear a, wear a mirror on your face. People are going to use it." So yeah. Really he wiped good. himself off again too. Yeah. I, I I just think think that's funny. It keeps it shiny, right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so oh, it's far, like, she it, will do that. They will, they will stick in your gums like that. Well, so. not, <laughs> but also, like maybe it has to be kind of permeable for him to be able to see and breathe through it, right? So maybe like his sweat does kind of come through, maybe. Yeah, I, I guess. Huh? Maybe yeah, right, no. Right? Is is her eating sunflower seeds? Is that a reference to the X Files and um, Agent Mulder? Uh, Mulder always uh, ate uh, sunflower seeds. Maybe so. Well, so do I. I mean, I don't, I don't. Could have been a reference to me. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) I had, I had him today. So, I just, that's what I immediately thought of because he's, he's an FBI agent, and Jack. So far, I haven't, I haven't uh, figured it out. You don't, you don't know. Uh, I think it's that's pretty safe to say. (laughs) You, I'm, I'm pretty good at keeping secrets, so you don't know. There you are. Um. But, uh, yeah, and uh, I think she realizes something's kind of uh, foul at play. She notices uh, the um, uh, wheelchair marks uh, left behind by Will. uh, Right. And, uh, you know, she asks about uh, Angela, um, which, you know, uh, Looking Glass kind of gives her up a little bit. But I think he knows that, you know, Lori knows what's going on. Um, and well, she's, ex- she's extremely smart. Yes. Um, and the funeral is, uh, happening that day. And we you know with everybody there, 
uh, we kind of have uh, a seventh caliber member like coming up to with a with a you know a bomb a vest bomb vest uh, and we saw that in last week uh, yesterday's episode or last week's episode um, but uh, you know that was a, a moment I just did not expect in the episode uh, that was uh, pretty intense um, and action packed. Their use of the ticking clock is definitely anxiety inducing. <laughs> Is there any chance that Judd is not dead? Uh, <laughs> we saw I mean, a lot because, of bits and pieces of him blow up today. Well, you had you had you have uh, Blake says she says that it seems awful quick to bury someone in a, in a murder. Uh, I think it was more it, it, because because you're 100 percent, and then you have Angela the drags animal. the coffin in to where the the guy has been. Uh, she drags the guy in there and then puts the coffin inside it. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I I know I know I'm probably wrong, but it just it just seems odd. I don't think he's alive. I just think they were trying to quickly move this along because you know he wouldn't have passed the toxicology report. Or the toxicology report would show um, cocaine, or, which you know cocaine, whatever. Maybe there's probably some other drugs there they probably didn't want to have found out. Um, but isn't it all legal in Robert Redford's world? Uh, we don't know. We don't know. Okay. All right. Or Robbie Redford? Um, Just because he's Democrat doesn't mean he's going to legalize all the drugs. No, I thought I thought that it was. I thought there was more freedoms there, so I just threw it out there. He's a, um, he's an actor, so. <laughs> so you're saying um, all actors are druggies? That seems kind of just painting with a broad brush there. there, Jack. Well, I just think it's Studio Fifty Four. I'm sorry. I apologize. I wasn't. I wasn't quite sure exactly where they were breaking into the Seventh Cavalry as yeah. the eulogy was. Was you know I was like, oh, are they? And I was like, no, that doesn't make sense that they would break into a bank while this is going on. Are they like? And so you know, I'm kind of like putting those that, pieces together as it's happening live. That I knew. I knew what was going on there. Yeah, I was like, well, I think that it's like some. It's a mausoleum, so it's probably mm-hmm. there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was just. It was kind of like a turn of events. And, uh, you know, Laurie kills him, and then the thing starts to to count down because he said it was connected to his heart. Um, And then Angela kind of dumps him in uh, Judd's grave and pushes the coffin over just in time uh, to kind of save everybody. With Judd Judd allegedly in it. Uh, I I think he's definitely in it. I think you're – there's – the suspicious reasons are not because he's not there, I think, because the police force was obviously trying to kind of speed this along without doing a full – uh, investigation because uh, she and, said she was going to dig him up the next day yeah. yes because she obviously su- suspects that it's not seventh calvary um yeah and angela knows it's not seventh calvary uh but you know her one uh key uh piece of evidence or witness uh was abducted by a big magnet thing uh, <laughs> was so, he abducted or did he go willingly uh, we assume only because he smiled as he as he was yeah. being taken away. So uh, he wasn't abducted. Abducted. <laughs> abducted. Abducted. He, he was, was reducted. 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 <laughs> he he went by choice. But um, yeah, and uh, you know, kind of after that, as they're all investigating it, um, <laughs> one uh, Lori takes Petey's coffee, which again, well, I he, like, have, have you drank that yet? Nope. <laughs> And, um, yeah, I think I, I thought Lori's speech to, uh, Angela was a little hokey, you know, especially like I eat bad guys for breakfast or whatever that line was. Uh, and, uh, Angela to type basically kind of, you know, says F you, F you Lori, um, yeah. and dumps out <laughs> the coffee and, uh, walks away. So I know that, you know, Lori's trying to get to the bottom of here, but I don't know if being tough, uh, the tough guy here, a bad cop well, here, was the way to go. She knows that there was something behind. She knew that the door, yeah. the hidden door, and she knew that Lori was there, and you're not the feigning type. I think yeah. what I liked about this scene, you have two strong women who are trying to outsmart each other. Mm-hmm. And it sets up for good TV the rest of the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, the the dynamic of both of them because yeah, on on one hand, even even as as a as a Watchmen fan, you're like, Oh, I, I like Lori, you know, like and and we, we've already seen how tough as nails she can be and, and darkly funny she can be in this this episode. 
but we've also had those two episodes with Angela, so we know a little bit more about her, and we're kind of rooting for her as well. So I I really liked that, and yeah, I love that that shot of um, Lori through the lens of the right. owl owl uh, lenses there. The owl yeah, that was, that, was, that was cool. Yeah, so a lot of lot of really great. Cine- cinematography moments that just kind of you know set up some really cool cool images. I, I wanted to mention uh, before we we move even further um, down the line with 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 Lori's story here is we did get to see Green's public address. Um, Keen, and Keen, Keen. Uh, why did I say Green? Thanks, because thanks for correcting me on that. Um, anyway, his his public address though he mentions the Russians field generators. So I'm just kind of curious as to you know this is, is this some kind of back backstory throwaway thing or is this going to come play out like later in the season and what these Russian field generators are? So I thought that was kind of a hmm like makes you pause. So hmm. well, right because yeah. yeah the Russians were the big threats. You know nuclear holocaust was the big threat in uh, the original uh, Watchmen series and until. Uh, Ozzy Manis's kind of horrible plan, which did work, um, kind of put a stop to that. Uh, but it's interesting to see those tensions are kind of building up again, for sure. And and he was, you know, basically saying like, look, you know, you know, my 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 focus is is the people here, not uh, Russia. So, yeah, um, yeah. But again, I think it's a good cop because it's a little. It's a little bit of something that uh, will probably is a, a thread that if we keep pulling is going to become a bigger storyline down the road. For sure. Um, so, yeah. Uh, what, what, uh, after that, what, what else is there? I'm trying to make sure I, I cover everything with Lori's story. I know we have the, the Dr. Manhattan uh, dildo, which I thought was uh, interesting. <laughs> Um, I didn't know they, I mean, is, that a, is that you know custom made for her or can you buy that at a shop? I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking that that's that's a buy at a shop kind of thing. You know, did she did she use it on Pete? That's what I'm wondering about. <laughs> no, clearly she was looking at that and she was like, hmm, you know, this is kind of cold and I've been using it a lot and you know it's just <laughs> it's not quite like Doctor Manhattan because she's clearly had that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, she settles for little Petey. Little Petey. <laughs> little little Petey. <laughs> Who wears the mask? He does Which, wear the mask because yeah. probably like part of their, you know, play or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah works. She said. Yeah. She said, "Yeah, wear the mask, Petey. <laughs> wear the mask. Go when ahead, little Petey. Put on your mask." Yeah. Maybe she didn't want to know. Maybe she was pretending it wasn't Petey to so put on the mask so I don't um, have to see you. And then kind of the, the – is that the car, the car that dropped? Is that the one that Will was in? No, it was a van. No, no, that's the car. Right? The, no, I, yeah, I thought Will the, was in a van. No, he wasn't no, in it was a van. van. It was in a car. Yeah. It, was like an, sure? it, okay. it was like one of those fake SUV cars. Okay. Uh, and, and, of course, if I'm wrong about this, um, you know, just let me know. Like, like calling Keen Green. So and if I'm right, just, you know, let me know. Can we just say, <laughs> but also I do want to give Matt some props. You have had a couple big things turn out to be right that you have mentioned. <laughs> so I just want to, you know, give you a moment to shine here and say, good job, Matt. Oh, hey, you, okay. you, you, you had a couple good, good first weeks this week. Eh, not so good, but you know, it's okay. No, I, I say you've been doing a great job. <laughs> you've been the all-star of this podcast, which isn't <laughs> saying much, I've... but I think you have been the all-star of the podcast. I, um, I'm glad that I'm earning my keep. So, <laughs> I, I I don't have any firsthand knowledge about that that uh, that dildo, but um, <laughs> that's where you need warm taffy. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> but I, I I know where you're you're kind of headed at least, Jay, with with the fact that we we kind of hear the pl- the the kind of the payoff or the the whole uh, rest of the story, the joke um, mm-hmm. that she's she's telling uh, dr manhattan in the in the blue booth um which um i just i just love how that played out like throughout this episode yes i i i absolutely loved it um 
Or the and words it, that she uses to basically say, like, you know, she went through each one of the heroes. The owl, he didn't kill anybody. He goes to hell. The smartest guy kills, you know, three million people, goes to hell. Dr. Manhattan is basically a god. Um, and he knows he's going to hell because he can see the future. And then she mentions herself, you know, which is just so good. Which is uh, the one that, you know, God didn't remember who she was. Uh, mm-hmm. As well as you know, uh, and that's the one that kind of gets you right. And so I, I do love that angle about at least maybe how she sees herself, possibly. Um, and then yeah, this little nod with this uh, car getting dropped back down, and I, you know, we're pretty sure it's the one that uh, Will got taken away in. So does that confirm that Will is in cahoots with Doctor Manhattan? Well, if that's his car, yeah. Because at first I was like, oh, maybe it's just dropping and it's random and it's coincidence. But then we kind of see that Mars, you know, kind of somehow flare up that she sees it or something. Right. Um, so that definitely feels like a wink and a nod from Dr. Manhattan. So uh, Will would have to be connected to uh, uh, this whole thing uh, to Dr. Manhattan, right? Yeah, I guess yes. so. I would, th- I would say so. Which would mean Dr. Manhattan cares about society, which again kind of seems interesting. So there's there's a lot to unpack there that we're just going to probably wait and see, but it does it is fascinating. And could it... Uh, okay, and I'm just saying, like, maybe she wants so bad to have Dr. Manhattan just to recognize her, just to say, I'm thinking about you. So when this moment happens, of course, she's like, oh... He really does like me. He couldn't have dropped flowers. Well, I well, think I she, mean, she would, gave him, would, or he gave her a, a clue little, then, would right? Been, or... Would have been a little safer. <laughs> <laughs> she seemed startled, which shocked me. Well, yeah, it was a big car that just got dropped in front I of her. I mean, she's so, she's so cold. I just thought, you know, and, and cool. I thought that she, it wouldn't phase her. Anyway. Um, all right. Anything else from this episode, gentlemen? Before we talk, oh, to well, we we didn't even get into Ozzy Mandius. Oh so, yeah. yes. I mean, oh my god, I like jumped past that. Yes, Ozzy Mandius. Let's let's dive into it. Uh, um. Yeah. I mean, so the Ozzy Mandius Ozzy Mandius story kind of comes comes right after, I believe, the the eulogy and the funeral, uh, right. and and all of the action packed uh, of that. Uh, we we get to hear this cool reggae song um, from '68 or '69. Uh, uh, is Israeli? Is what is it? Um, sorry, I'm gonna totally murder that that song. Ah, but, don't, uh, don't even don't even worry about it. Let's okay. It. Anyway, it's a really cool song though, and we see Ozymandias building a suit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see him drawing. We see him painting like some some furiously. fabric. What's that? Like furiously, like just kind of like yeah. like a madman kind of. Yeah, and uh, you know well, he is a bad man, isn't he? Well, I guess so, from a certain um, point of view. Yeah, I mean, and it, so you know, I'm just like, oh, what is he making? And uh, you know, of course, he makes the suit um, for uh, Mr. Phillips to wear, <laughs> um, which I, I think we all kind of expected this was not going to go well, right? No, <laughs> like, no. <laughs> you, you see this guy just like about it, and. Oh man, I, they're definitely playing playing the mystery card there because the whole time I'm like, oh, wh- what's going to happen? Is he going up? Is he going down? Where is he going? Well, when they so showed the little catapult thing or the trebuchet, whatever it is, uh, I was like, oh, maybe he's just going to like sling him into space, right? Um, right. But so that kind of does that confirm that he's on a different planet, possibly, or time travel, eh, or no. a different dimension, different dimension. Different dimension, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean the the idea that the, uh, that uh, Doctor uh, Manhattan may have actually like imprisoned him, yeah. you know, um, and and set him in a place and is actually playing a game with him, you know. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, he he can't be on Earth. Like, no, no, I don't. I don't think so. I mean. We see in this this scene where he's riding on the horse later, it, it almost like looks like you know the Moors in England or something mm-hmm. like that. Like it is a very English he's country. Shot in style. Wales. Okay, shot in Wales. There, yeah. Um, and and yet there's bison there, which that doesn't. They don't have bison yeah. there. 
Like it's, it it's definitely just... feels like it's a construct made to kind of contain him, which you know we did see. Well, there's we saw two people kind of building that castle that he's in, uh, and Doctor Manhattan was one of them. So it would it would seem like maybe Doctor Manhattan built this this prison for him, and when he does go to try and bake a new suit with thicker hide. Um, and he kills a bison with his bow and arrow, uh, somebody shoots at him, and this is a right. game warden that basically kind of gives him a slap on the wrist saying, hey, 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 we, it looks like you're trying to get out. That's not what you're, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and then he kind of closes it out by when he kind of has uh, his, uh, one of his servants write this you know, very sternly worded letter. And he's going to go hunt at midnight, but then he dons his uh, Ozymandias suit, which I did not expect to see happen. Uh, so, you know, maybe he's just going to go kill the warden, and that's going to, like, let him be free to do whatever he wants. But uh, it'll be interesting. And, and the game warden was wearing some type of mask as well. I thought, yes. I thought it was an interesting call out to, I mean, we've heard about, uh, Laurie mentioned the Lone Ranger. So mm-hmm. I thought it was kind of an interesting kind of call out where it kind of reminded me of the Lone Ranger in some way. Um, so uh, I think I think his assistant he he calls her Mrs. Crookshank or Miss yes. Crookshank. Miss Miss, yeah. Miss Crookshanks. Miss Crookshanks, yeah. So um, at least she, at least she doesn't die. Uh, not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Give it time. <laughs> Give it time. <laughs> yeah, and the the game warden is actually riding a black horse, by the way, um, where. He has the white horse that he is uh, named. What was it? Boos Boos Fal- or whatever. I looked it up. It's basically the horse that uh, Alexander the Great had. So, which yeah. Ozymandias is a huge Alexander the Great admirer. So it, it only Who makes is sense. It? You know, he's an impressive dude. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, interesting to seeing the the game going afoot there. I also closed. In on just the, that single image of of uh, uh, you know Mr. Phillips laying there because there's a shot where you see some of his body you know after he kicks it you know you kind of see like it's like it looks like bone but it also doesn't look like real bone. Um, well, I thought he was like frozen, like he had ice on him. He is he is frozen, but when he kicks in there, like at one point you get to see kind of like his shoulder area is like broken free and it does not look like a normal shoulder well, like, bone is it a robot totally i mean i'm just trying to figure out like what is this guy you know like it, it clearly is flesh and bone but that doesn't look like a normal body um like a normal anatomical bone structure and i just mm-hmm. for a show that's that's so focused on some of these details i thought that was an interesting detail to give us about the body so Make of that what you will. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, a lot to unpack in this episode, and I feel like we've unpacked it as best we can right after the episode airs. And now it's time to get into what you all thought. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick ad break. Listener Feedback. All right, it's listener feedback time. Uh, we have a couple emails and a phone call to get into, so let's start off with the emails. This first one is from David Gott, uh, whoever that guy is. Um, David Gott. Matt, Jay, and Jack, I enjoy the first episode of the new podcast. Thanks for doing it. I'm a huge fan of the Watchmen source material, so I've been waiting for the show, particularly as Damon is a huge fan himself and gets it. A couple things to consider. Regina King's character tells the school children she was born in Vietnam. The Vietnam conflict was a huge part of the source material. Is it possible she is somehow related to the events there? Perhaps the Senate of the comedian's illegitimate children. Then were mm. child of the woman mm. who cut the median, uh, the comedian in the original story and it was then shot somehow live. Two, did anyone notice that King's children were not the same race as her in some cases? I guess this might be before last episode. So that one might have been answered. Um, the show has so many racial overtones. This must mean something. Cross worship the Judd. Um, but no, we got that answered. Uh, number three, Little Bighorn was code for extermination at the 7th Cavalry, in my opinion. So the message was, uh, they are back. Let's destroy them. Uh, the question remains, was this an official police action or Judd and Sister Knight acting for a different reason? Number four, why did Judd have access to Archie? Uh, was it Archie or did the police just use his tech now? Uh, who was the masked woman piloting the ship? Does it matter? Uh, great show. Sincerely got a good Dave sent from 
my iPad. Thanks, Scott. Uh, some good stuff there. Uh, some of the stuff was answered already, but uh, I think yeah, the uh, the Archie question and why they had it uh, is one that remains to be seen. Uh, but I, I do like Matt's theory that he kind of posed uh, in this episode that maybe he was working with them at some point or when they apprehended him or something or pr- imprisoned him, they stole it. Uh, but I do think there's a connection there for sure. And, and the woman uh, piloting it, I think, I think that was, I think that was pirate Jenny. It was pirate like, Jenny. Okay. So for sure. cause I, she, she made an appearance in this, this episode. I love like yes. the, the the scene with her and Red Scare where basically Lori's just like she just doesn't give a crap about those two. I love that. Oh man. So All Thanks, right. David. Uh we have an email from Ethan. Uh, okay. Hello. Jack hit my vanity button, so here I am. I try to take notes that this show is so dense that half were answered in the course of the show, and then 28 more questions piled up. I picked one thing to talk about. Warning, leftover references abound. Uh, the Keen slash 7th K connection seems so obvious that I have to second guess it based on the fact that it's a Damon Lindelof show. It seems a perfect fit for a comic book, but all signs point to it and not in a subtle way. Kevinism, anyone? Uh, the only thing I know about this show is that I have no idea what's coming next, and I'm absolutely loving it. Okay, I tried. Thanks so much for doing a podcast of the show. The Lindelof experience just went be the same without Jay and Jack. And Mike Bloom's obviously better-looking replacement. Hi, Matt. <laughs> wow. Um, I praise. Thank you. Um, Lego, so, so Ethan has problem with his vision. Lego host, <laughs> airport stalker, Ethan. Uh, P.S. If Jay could use the current voice to describe what's in Lori's suitcase, that would be great. Maybe a gutter cleaner with unique biometrics. Uh, <laughs> that would been a good name, gutter cleaner. That would have been a good one. Gutter cleaner. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Ethan, always great getting an email from you. Uh, also, I met yep. Ethan in real life, IR- IRL, at an airport in Nashville, I think. Um <laughs> So, anyways, thank you, Ethan, for the email. Uh, let's see. And we've got a phone call. Let me uh, play that right now. <laughs> or in five seconds. Whenever this thing decides to play. Here we go. Hello, Jack and Young Whooper Snappers. This is Jared from Missouri calling to uh, give my theory of the week. I think that uh, the young senator is a fraud. Uh, he, we know that he's trying to run for president against, I think they called him Robbie Redford, which I got a kick out of him calling Robbie. Uh, I think that the 14th Calvary, if that's their name, I think it is, uh, the 14th, well, whatever the Calvary <laughs> number is, I think that they are a sham. I don't believe they actually even hold an ideology. I think that if they're just a puppet for a politician to prop them up so that he can use them as a reason uh, for uh, becoming the president of the United States. I hope I'm explaining this right. Um, just go through it one more time very, very quickly. I don't think this, the, the Calvary is actually a hate group of any kind or that they've actually been inspired by Rorschach. I think that they are just a puppet for a politician create buzz for him so that when he is able to take them down that he's able to prop himself up. I uh, hope, uh, hope it makes some sense. Guys, looking forward to the show and we'll talk to you all later. Bye. Uh, thank you for the call. I think it's a, a really good theory. Um, I, I don't necessarily uh, I it'd be tough I think for them to like will, be willing to die for the cause. So I do think maybe they're just maybe pawns in this situation. Uh, but I maybe, do they think it's a really maybe they don't know they're going to die, right? Well, that or yeah, just they, they do believe in it, whatever they are doing. But uh, the the mastermind behind it doesn't actually care. It is just for political means, um, and something some kind of twist like that would fit into the Watchmen lore because maybe, it's happened a few times. Um, maybe that's why they they were going to take the senator, to make it you know make, give him like uh, some publicity, you know, he escapes or whatever happens. Well, exactly, yeah. If he's like a well, I mean, he was he was very willing to go with them, and I mean, yeah, he didn't he, even he didn't even hesitate. 
if he if he masterminded this, he may have been like, okay, like I'm gonna go with them, and then I'll be a hero, or you and know. Then, and then Lori sh- screwed the whole thing up by killing the guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um. No, that's that's a that's a good good idea there. I mean, uh, wouldn't be surprised if we don't see by episode, you know, five or seven, where you know all of a sudden like. Keen pulls down a Rorschach mask or something like that, or, or he lifts off a Rorschach mask and then it's Keen. So, um, but he's definitely benefited by, and we learned in this episode where he's the one that's implemented this this use of the police, um, and uh, and and in this whole dor- Dorpa, oh, so Dopa, sorry, Dorpa, <laughs> <laughs> um, and. Uh, we we also haven't. Uh, I mean, we we didn't get a chance to mention this in the, in you know just kind of our breakdown of the the episode. But uh, we saw the Millennium Clock, mm-hmm. as well as yeah. we got our first reference to Lady True, uh, who bought um, Adrian Veidt's company. So, uh, and based on the the trailer for next week, it looks like we will actually get to see her, meet her, and find out maybe who and what her agenda is. So. So I'd be interested to see how she plays into to this whole, you know, I mean, I would think of her being kind of above this whole 7th Cal- Cavalry KKK thing, because right now it seems to be mainly white men that wear flannels. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, great, great thoughts there. And, and thanks. Thanks for the call. Yes. Thank you. Really, I, yeah. Good theory. Definitely. Especially, yeah. He was very willing to go uh, with that seventh cavalry member. Because there uh, wasn't any hesitation. Usually, yeah. it's like, well, you know. <laughs> okay, I'll go. <laughs> All right. And there's plenty of police there. I mean, the, to stand in front of him or to bodyguard him. Um, I I did love the call out there too, um, where Lori figured out how. Uh, like because her dad had a had a hidden secret closet that that's how she figured out that uh, Judd had one too. I thought that was a really nice connection back yes. to the comic. So mm-hmm. anyway, sorry. Random thoughts about this episode. It was it was such a fun episode, and and you know, like I said, I felt like it really percolated and, and built off of everything that that we you know built up on those first two and um, set up some great dynamics and. What an interesting thing that the the other uh, what was it the email was that the was that the email about um, maybe from from David God about um, you know possibly Angela being a illegitimate child of the comedian and yeah, how that might one. how that might set up an interesting dynamic even between Angela and Lori also mm-hmm. being both you know daughters of the comedian you know so yeah. something that could create and a they, and they end up working together. Well, it'd, it'd be an interesting like way of drawing them in together if they're working against each other. But then by the ninth or tenth episode, all of a sudden, this is a buddy cop show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see them being buddies. Well, I mean, I didn't, I, I, I didn't see that happening uh, with when I watched LA Confidential. But by the end, I was like, "This is a dude, buddy dude, cop movie." Dude, spoiler alert. Uh, or you know, even uh, Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy didn't get along at first, but you know, eventually they did. So. That's true. They did respect each other in the end. Anyway, it, he was a Beverly Hills cop too. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm I'm diverting. <laughs> so. And he, he wasn't like there either. So yeah, again, no? that's that's the trope, right? At the beginning, you don't you're, you're like oh, yeah, I just, I don't like the way you operate, but and then by the yeah. end, like, oh, we're friends. Anyway, yeah, I don't I don't drink your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that is it for this week's episode of Watchmen with Jay, Jack, and Matt. Uh, give us a call at 385-309-0311. Calling time. Uh, also, send an email to watchmenjjm at gmail.com. Join our Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash J and Jack group. Use our Amazon link at jandjack.com slash Amazon. It'll be the same Amazon you know and love, but a small percentage of those sales do go to the J and Jack production fold. And speaking of supporting this network, become a patron today. Whether you give $1 or more a month, it all helps make these shows possible. I want to especially thank Tack from Tokyo, Eckhart Richter, Magli the Magnificent, Joanne with the Plan, Drake the Destroyer, and Ed the Creepy Mailman. Thank you to all of our patrons. You can find a full list over at jandjack.com. 
Uh, gentlemen, thank you again for a fun podcast. Look forward to what comes next week and talking about it with you right after. Until then, hasta luego, and goodbye. Bye. Great show, guys. One in a blue booth. Ha, 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 ha.